Yesterday it was all A's versus the Rangers. All facets of the game were working for the green and gold. Scott Kazmir was excellent as he allowed just one run through eight innings. The defense shined behind rookie Billy Burns, and the offense got the big hit when they needed it. All in all, it was the second consecutive series win at home for Bob Melvin and the boys. Tonight, they take their show down the coast as they open up a five-game Southern California trip. First stop, Anaheim, to take on their division rival, Angels. It's game one. A's Angels, next. at Angel Stadium of Anaheim on a beautiful night for baseball. It's the first of a three-game series on a Friday night in Southern California pitching matchup. The lefty Hector Santiago is going to take the hill for the Angels, and Jesse Chavez, the tough luck pitcher, is going to pitch for the Athletics. So we are set for baseball from Anaheim. It's the A's and the Angels coming up on Comcast Sportsnet, California. Hey again, everybody. Welcome to Oakland A's Baseball along with Ray Fossey. I'm Glenn Kuyper. Well, what a job the rookie Billy Burns is doing. And, Ray, I think you could say he's the A's best player right now, and it just seems like he's really getting comfortable at the big league level. And really what a difference a year makes because we saw him last year when, as he said, the game was very fast. He slowed it down except his speed on the base pad. Yesterday afternoon, first pitch once he got on base. So second, ended up scoring a run, which actually was the only run the A's had for the first seven innings. But how about his catches defensively against the wall? Pulling really a Mike Trout, which we'll see in this series. This one of the better ones here in the left center as he just left his feet, made a tremendous play coming up with, of course, Scott Kazmir, very happy. But he's the igniter on this ball club. He swings early, not your prototypical leadoff hitter because he swings a lot of pitches. He doesn't get a lot of walks. Ace will face a tough left-hander tonight, Hector Santiago. And, Ray, he always pitches well against the Athletics. Well, he gets run support, and that helps him, at least against the Athletics. And look at the numbers he has had against the A's, 3-0 and in his career. He has a little bit of a funk delivery which I think messes up the hitters he's throwing his cut fastball a little bit more to the lefties and also throw it to the right handers inside as well as going back door but the thing for him is to have Jesse Chavez pitch well eliminate the offensive support and maybe the A's have a chance to win the first game of this series and Jesse Chavez will be looking for his third win of the year so we are set to go from the big A in Anaheim we'll have lineups and first pitch when we come back to the ballpark on a beautiful night for baseball it's the A's and the Angels coming up on Comcast Sportsnet, California.
Podcast Sportsnet California is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Taste the new black pepper cheeseburger today, only at Jack in the Box. And by Toyota, the full-time automaker with the longest-lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. Angels in their all-whites, led by Mike Trout, take the field for game one of this three-game series. We are at Angel Stadium of Anaheim. Let's check the game time weather for tonight. It's presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Get to the beach. The admission-free boardwalk is now open daily. Boy, it is nice. 70 degrees. It's not humid. It was very comfortable during the day, and well, we've been down here this time of year where it starts to get very warm and very humid, but, boy, that is not the case tonight. Tough to find better conditions than we have right now for this ball game. Let's look at the A's lineup. It starts with that young man, Billy Burns, who is becoming quite a story for the Athletics, taking a 313 batting average into tonight's game. Mark Canna will hit second. Josh Reddick in the third spot. Ben Zobrist again in the cleanup spot. Billy Butler hits fifth. Steven votes sixth. Brett Laurie is the third baseman. He'll hit seventh. Josh Fegley will catch. Gets the left-hander. He'll hit eighth. And Marcus Simeon is the shortstop batting ninth. And it will be Hector Santiago on the mound for the Angels in the open of this series. And as we detailed earlier, he has pitched well against the Athletics. And 12th start this year, of course, he started against the Athletics. We mentioned the run support. He left 10-1. to The Angels defeated the A's 14-1. to So he's got plenty of support. But he also throws a number of different types of pitches, including a couple of different fastballs and a cutter that seemed to be working very well for him. So Santiago is ready. And so are we as Billy Burns steps in, hitting from the right side, and the first pitch of the ball game is a fastball swing and a miss. So 0-1 to Burns, who comes in hitting 313, two home runs, nine RBIs. He leads the American League rookies in hits with 47. And he swings and misses, and it's one and two. Canada follow, and then Reddick here to open up the ball game. Santiago delivers in a fastball that just missed inside. That's big Ted Barrett calling balls and strikes. He's the crew chief. Chris Conroy, Angel Hernandez, Scott Berry round out the umpiring crew. Pop up into the seats, back behind home plate, and a fan, five pitches into the game with an A's jersey on, <laughs> reaches over and makes a nice catch. And proud of it, too. Pretty good seats for that group of A's fans, right below us to our right, and reached over and tumbled a little bit, made a nice play. Seven rows back, he's in a good spot. Another foul ball, this one well down the right field line and into the seats. Angels, of course, the Twins had a gentleman by the name of Rod Carew, who was a great hitter, tough to pitch to. And the way Billy Burns, he's far from being Rod Carew. Rod, he's a Hall of Famer with 3,000-plus hits, but it seems like everything you threw him, he'd find a way to make contact. And for Billy Burns, even though they will shade him very shallow in the infield and the outfield, they'll find a way to make contact, at least put the ball in play. At least we have seen that from him and utilize his tremendous speed. 3-2 pitch is popped up foul again. And listen, for Billy Burns, who and we know he likes to swing at the first pitch. Now, we don't know if that's going to continue as his career goes on, but it's hard to walk a lot Absolutely. when you swing at the first pitch. Now, he's getting hits. He's getting on base. So the way he, he approaches it right now, you don't really look at the walk so much. And that one missed inside and a very close pitch. Burns has a leadoff walk. And just as you mentioned, he walks a lot. Right. <laughs> there he is. Also had a nine-pitch at bat. I don't see that very often from Burns. Here's the defense for the Angels. Navarro, Trout, and Calhoun in the outfield. Kubica, Ibar, Giovatella, and Pujols around the infield third to first. And Carlos Perez is the catcher. So a couple of youngsters in the lineup for the Angels. Kyle Kubitska, the third baseman, and Carlos Perez, the catcher. You know, one thing Billy Burns does offer to this ball club, and, of course, I always think about the great Ricky Henderson. Again, Billy's not going to hit the number of home runs, but his threat to steal, and that's why he got a pretty good pitch on 3-2, and two, but took it off the plate inside. 
Somebody's low jumping behind the plate. <laughs> Perez jumped up like he thought Billy Burns was going to be running and came up ready to throw. Numbers for Canna, 247, eight home runs, 25 RBIs. Hit home run in that Texas series. And Canna follows this one. Heads up, Ray Fossey. Into the booth, but nobody is injured, and that's a good thing. Well, Mark Canna, big two-run home run in the eighth inning yesterday, and that was very, very big because the A's were really at that point only a one-to-nothing lead. Scott Casimir was pitching great, giving up just one hit, but Canna, a two-run home run, and then, of course, a little bit later, it was Josh Reddick, a three-run shot. So 0-2 to Canna. That foul ball came into the booth. John Reynolds, our fine stage manager, did not really make the catch. He was underneath the table, and the ball <laughs> rolled into his hand as he came up from underneath the table. <laughs> Canna tried to hold up. He couldn't do it. Hard slider from Santiago, and that's the first out of the ball game. And that'll bring up Josh Reddick. Yesterday, Josh Reddick. This moment is our Ford right choice. A home run off a lefty, and that's a big deal for Reddick. Slow curveball against Detweiler, and first of the year for Josh Reddick. You can see the catcher going in to take what he thought was going to be a curveball in the dirt, but instead, Reddick, a three run shot, giving him nine on the season, the previous eight all against righties. This is his first home run, Ray, off a lefty since 2013. Like that. And I thought it was interesting, Reddick hitting third tonight, because you remember on Tuesday night, he was pinch hit for late in the game, and he was not happy about it. Right. I mean, you, know, hey, you see his point, but Bob Melvin had to do what he thought was the right thing to do. But then the next night, he got a hit off the lefty. Right. And then yesterday, a home run off the lefty. And tonight, Bob says, fine, you know what? <laughs> I like it. And he may have done it again. No, it's going to hang up for Calhoun. But I think you got to give Reddit credit for saying, you know what? I'm going to try to get this right. And Bob Melvin says, you know what? I like the swings off the lefty. I'm going to hit you third tonight. Well, he has faced some tough lefties, and while his numbers have not been that great, as uh, those numbers we showed, hitting just over 100, but he's faced some tough lefties, and he's gotten some big hits against the lefties, and including yesterday a three-run shot. So two outs for Ben Zobrist. Zobrist. Was in the cleanup spot yesterday, and the A's won. And see Bob Melvin do that if if it works. Let's oh, do yeah. it again. So burst one for five in yesterday's game. So his second game in that leadoff spot. Fastball a little bit inside. And Santiago, the lefty, and it's something that Billy Burns trying to pick up. <clears throat> Moves from lefties as well as the righties, but he has yet to attempt to run. And this keeps getting off. You think once he got on yesterday, he did not wait. First pitch, and he was off and running. Burns with 11 steals in 13 attempts, so a very good ratio. Goes over there again. Zobra steps out now, steps back in. Zobra's hitting 208, couple of home runs, 16 RBIs. Remember with the Angels, Mike Socia would have the first baseman off the bag a little bit, left handed pitcher, and Albert Pujols, the veteran, is off a little bit. Not as much as you'll see the left, the first baseman. Usually a little bit farther off the bat, closer to the pitcher. Bounce to the right side. Giovanelli a long ways to go. He throws, not in time. Giovatella, excuse me, the second baseman, was shifted well behind the bag at second base. So he had a long ways to go. And... Just didn't have enough time. Well, you see where his position, and you can understand why he had a tough time. And Ben Zobrist able to 
take advantage of the opportunity. So A's with first and second. Burns had to stop at second, but for Ben Zobris, remember the left knee, and it's good to see him running as well as he is now, playing more at second, especially with the lefty tonight. Sogard is feeling better. He'll probably be back in the lineup soon. Jim Vitello, so two on, two out for Butler. And Jim Vitello has played some very good baseball for yep. the Angels. Thought there might be strike. Think there might be some question with how Kendrick traded the Dodgers and maybe not the type of production that Kendrick would offer, but he's played solidly a second. Four home runs, 29 RBIs for Butler, who was one for seven in that series against the Rangers. Butler has a couple of home runs against the Angels this year. And that one is a little high. Santiago thought it was a strike. The Butler, four home runs, two against the Angels this year. He's seven for 26 against the Angels this year. Butler backing off, but looked like at least had the middle part of the plate. Santiago kicks in the 1-1 pitch foul straight back. So maybe we shouldn't be surprised that Butler's got a couple of home runs already against the Angels this year. He's always hit well against them. 14 career home runs, 48 RBIs in 70 games. And here at Angel Stadium, a career 325 hitter. So probably a pretty good ballpark to hit in. Yeah. Butler right now behind in the count. Inside, not surprised at the cutter. Got him looking. So Santiago gets the inside pitch. Side retired. A strand a pair, and we're headed to the bottom of the first. No score. Look at their lineup. Starts with that man, Eric Iba, the veteran shortstop. Mike Trout hits second. Albert Pujols, who is red hot, hits third. Cole Calhoun in the cleanup spot. And Johnny Giovatella is playing so well, he's hitting in the fifth spot. <laughs> Efren Navarro is the left fielder. Matt Joyce, the DH. Young catcher, Carlos Perez. And then Kyle Kubitska, the young third baseman. Jesse Chavez, first game against uh, the Angels this year. Actually, was his first start since joining the rotation. Of course, he... Relieved Jesse Hahn in Kansas City. They kept him in the rotation. He pitched well, gave up just one hit. Unfortunately, it was a home run to Calhoun after an error. So he has pitched well, but of course, the run support still not exactly what the A's would like to do for Jesse Chavez. He's pitched so well, but just not scoring him a lot of runs. So he faces Ibar. Ibar, a switch hitter. And the first pitch is hit on the ground, scooped up by Zobrist, and that's out in the hole. So interesting, the Butler at bat, Ray, he asked for time. Watch him right, watch the right hand, asked for time. But he did not get it. 
Okay, he's still in the batter's box. He saw that he was not given time, and, and guys can do it. At least he did step out, which some guys will do. So he used his hand, asked for time. He was not granted time, so that's when you really have to continue to hit. Be yeah. prepared to hit. And Ted Bear is basically saying he was in the stretch, ready to pitch, and we've seen too often where time will be granted as a pitcher's ready to throw. He's going to hurt himself. So I, I think, you know, from Butler's standpoint, you ask, you're not giving it, get ready to to play. And you are only requesting That's time. Right. The That's umpire right. does not. I mean, listen, I think certainly more often than not, the umpire will give you time, right. but not always. Right. I agree. But I think that for the health of a pitcher, if a pitcher is in the set position, and while he may be taking some time, but if he's ready to pitch, it's hard at that point yeah. for an umpire to say, okay, I'll give you time, because you don't know if right as you say, okay, he starts to throw, That's and right. then he tries to stop. But it looked like Butler at least kept himself in the batter's box, used his hand, wasn't granted, and unfortunately a pretty good pitch by Santiago. Here's Mike Trout. Two and one, Trout. Trout asked for time. Much. Time. But it was a little earlier. Yeah. Early. Uh, it's dangerous from his standpoint because he asked and it's just stepped out. You, you should, really shouldn't do it until the umpire does grant it. Three and one out of Trout with Albert Pujols waiting in the on deck circle. Well, they will try to stay away from Mike Trout, and we saw Sonny Gray do it very well when he pitched against the Angels, and Jesse Chavez trying to do the same thing. Trout checks his swing. He does not go, and it's a walk. So Trout's aboard. Let's look at the defense for the A's. Canna is in left. Burns in center, Reddick in right. Lori and Simeon on the left side, Zoberst and Boat on the right side, and Fegley is your catcher. So here's Albert Pujols. He's in one of those stretches, is Pujols, where you need to be real careful. He is hot. He's got nine home runs. In his last 13 games, Ray. Be careful. Yeah. Well, that's called a healthy Albert Pujols. Yeah. And he's healthy as he is showing, and yeah, you know, those numbers can pop out at you. And we're talking June the 12th with 17 home runs on the season. And he hits this one high in the air to shallow right. And Reddick is under it. He's got it. So that's the second out. Here's our true story brought to you by McDonald's, and it has to do with Albert Pujols. This was last night, and it was home run number 537 in his career, and he passed Mickey Mantle on the all-time home run list. It was in the ninth inning down in St. Petersburg. So he passed the Mick. So he is now 17th, or make that 16th, with Mike Schmidt 11 away. So he's got to get to Schmidt if he stays healthy, and let me get to Manny Ramirez as well. So Albert Pujols having a very fine season. Albert Pujols has hit all of his from one side. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> the yes, great Mickey Manna was one of the best switch hitters. Eddie Murray might have been the offense. I know Mantle is very close to the top, if not the top of the list, the most home runs as a switch hitter. Calhoun swings and misses. Well, it's Calhoun who got the Two run home run, and notice that pitch to him, the first pitch, was a sinker away from it. Jesse Chavez in the start back on April the 23rd here in Anaheim, his first start, sixth grade innings. He tried to go inside, bring the two seamer back. He made a mistake, left it in the middle of the plate, and Calhoun hit a two run home run following an error. Inside, Jesse Chavez had made four relief appearances and then went into the rotation. And Pitched extremely well. In fact, his first two starts this year against the Angels, and he lost them both, one here and the other one at home. And Delaire did some checking. Mickey Mantle is the all-time home run hitter, switch hitter. When you hit that many. Ooh. And that one is going to be thrown away. It bounces into the camera well, and that's going to allow Trout to go to second, so that's going to be an error. You know, going back to the Albert Pujols event, is this overthrow at first base and 
Seaman Vogt tried to block it like a catcher, but could not. And once it went in the camera well, it was going to be second anyway. But Mike Trout got off first base, and Albert Pujols hit the shallow fly ball to right field. Very easy, really, for Josh Reddick to let it drop. Put Pujols at first, who is not the speed of Mike Trout. I mean, it's, you don't see it that often, and very rarely, as a matter of fact, you ever see it. But you have to think that who would you want on base, Mike Trout or Albert Pujols? Yeah, now Two and one now to Calhoun. Trout, the threat to steal. That's why they threw over. Probably wouldn't even have been holding Pujols. So Trout's at second with a threat and in scoring position. Remember, the Angels took no batting practice on the field today. Nope. They, they got in about 2.30 California time from St. Petersburg, which should be about 5.30 East Coast time. Strike on the outside corner. We know what that's all about. Yeah, and you know what? I just... That should not be allowed to happen. Yeah, I agree. So. Great location again. Looks like Calhoun looking inside. Pitch away again. Two and two the count to Cole Calhoun. Setting up outside and pitch is outside, but it drops low. Full count with Johnny Giovatella waiting in the index. Uh, Gio Vitella is right handed hitter first base is open and Calhoun a threat Gio Vitella having a very good season as well, but not the power of Calhoun See, Trout the runner at second and the payoff pitch is hit high in the air to Reddick who drifting back Still going back. He's near the wall and he makes the catch a couple of steps in front of the wall side retired Trout is stranded at second and we are scoreless after one in Anaheim at a whole new level with video walls from PRISM. Learn how at PRISM.com. Beautiful look at the Big A. Angel Stadium of Anaheim. Surrounded by freeways and parking lots. <laughs> Can't get away from it. So Hector Santiago, who stranded a couple of runners in the first inning, faces Stephen Vogt. First pitch a bit high. Vogt, Laurie, and Fegley for the A's here in the second. Vote hitting 290, 11 homers, and 40 RBIs. And playing first base tonight, trying to keep that bat in the lineup. And Stevens really in a bit of a funk right now with three homer or three hits in his last 27 at bats. And that one missed outside, two and two.
And good off speed pitch. And that's the third strikeout for Santiago. Oh, and it just hard enough. Steven Volt recognizes it right there and then disappears. And that's pretty good pitching by Santiago to make the pitch away from the lefty, not leave it inside where he can open up as Steven did and still make contact. There's the breakdown. And he uses them all. And Laurie drives one to center. Trot backs up. Now he's under it and he reaches up to make the catch. So two outs here in the second inning. Let's see the fastballs, the change, but really Ray in, in seeing him pitch quite a bit now the last couple years. He really uses all of his pitches in pretty much at any time. Exactly. Well, just in the first inning, the number of fastballs he threw inside of the right handers and struck out two. Canna as well as Billy Butler, the best really at the end. Fegley hits one high and foul. Josh Fegley behind the plate yesterday when Scott Kazmir and Evan Scribner combined to one hit the end of the Rangers in the series finale at the Coliseum. And you know what he said tonight? He said, I'd like to do the same as yesterday, only one hit less. <laughs> I said, that's pretty good. If you catch a, catch a no hitter, be outstanding. Fegley lines one down the left field line, and it's fair. Navarro picks it up off the sidewall, and Fegley continues his hot hitting with a two out double. Now, Stephen Vogt, who we talked about, is caught hit very well for the athletics. Said there's nobody that handles left handed pitchers better than Josh Fegley, and he shows it again. Down the line, he hooks it, just keep it in fair, and no chance for Navarro to do anything except play it off the sidewall. So the A's with a chance again with a runner in scoring position. They had it in the first inning. So they're 0 for 1 there, but trying it again. Put runners in scoring position, give yourself a chance to score and come up with a hit. You hope that eventually it's going to happen. So here's Simeon. First pitch to Marcus is a fastball on the outside corner for a strike. Simeon 276, six home runs, 16 RBIs, and he pokes that one to center, hit pretty well. Trout going back, and Trout gets there to make the catch. Side retired. Runner stranded, so we're going to the bottom of the second. It's no score between the A's and the Angels.
Tonight, let's go back to yesterday, and indeed, Scott Kazmier was terrific. Eight innings of one-hit baseball to pick up his third win of the year. Two walks, six strikeouts, and 105 pitches. And that's plenty good for our T-Mobile game changer. And, Ray, I thought it was interesting. We talked about it on the simulcast. First inning, he was throwing 89, 90 miles an hour. Second inning, 89, 90 miles an hour. And, you know, we were thinking, wait, is he all right? But he said, you know what? I, I want to try this. I want to hold a little bit back. And it worked. And it ended up one of his best starts yep. in an A's uniform. Well, he said, uh, actually, when we arrived last night, I said, what a great outing. He said, you know, I had a game plan, and it worked. And, well, you could tell, and we explained a little bit more. I had him on the radio side interview, and, and he basically said the hitters were thinking, is he not throwing as hard? Is that a changeup? So you get the hitters saying, because all, there's so much scattering reports out there that they all know exactly how hard a pitcher throws. Mm -hmm. So he was going soft, and all of a sudden later he's throwing 94-95, and that's what it surprised him. So he... He probably learned something yesterday and how to pitch, which he's really changed himself dramatically. Giovatella lines one toward left. It's going to bounce off the wall, and Giovatella, with a big turn, has got a leadoff double. So as Ray said, the young man has really played very well for the Angels. He won the second base job in spring training. And look at this location right down the middle. Very similar. Remember he hit the three-run home run? On a fastball down the middle, the first time the A's came to town. And this one, you know, some pitchers can't elevate fastballs. You try to get to chase, but, you know, Jesse Chavez is more a control pitcher down in the zone, using both sides of the plate. And to elevate, he threw it right down the middle, and not many hitters would expect to get an 0-2 fastball in the middle of the plate, but he did. So here's Efren Navarro, left-handed hitter. And there's a line drive toward Burns in left center field. He'll play it on a hop. Giovatella being waved home. Ball is cut off, and the Angels lead 1-0. So Efren Navarro swings at the first pitch, and he lines an RBI single to left center field. For Jesse Chavez, that seems like probably a 10-run single that Navarro just hit. But back-to-back -back elevated fastballs down the middle, belt high. And Giovatelli read it well and scored easily. And the old saying about trying to pull a ball to advance a runner. Navarro hit it to left center and hit it hard enough to score. That's Navarro's first RBI this year. And here's Matt Joyce. Matt Joyce struggling 183, four home runs, 17 RBIs. He's actually been swinging it a little bit better from when we saw the Angels in April when he was in a full scuffle. His average was sitting around 125. Joyce is the designated hitter. Fastball a little bit inside. In fact, Joyce against the A's this year is one for 21. It's a little hard when your player acquired his insurance for a guy named Josh Hamilton. And he was acquired from the Tampa Bay Rays for that purpose. And as Hamilton's gone now, it's up to him to try to do something. And that's a lot of pressure. Not that he, he didn't perform well when he's with the Rays because he did play well and they were, seemed to always be in contention. Right, it was Joyce for Kevin Jepson. Yeah. A little bit inside, and the count even at two and two. Those two faces there the last night in St. Petersburg, and Joyce ended up getting a big hit to help the Angels start their inning, which they ended up beating the Rays six to two in the series finale. Two two pitch a good take by Joyce and now it's a full count.
see if Navarro runs. He does, and it's ripped foul off the facing of the A's dugout. So we'll do 3 2 again with Carlos Perez, a right handed hitting catcher, waiting in the on deck circle. Runner goes. Ball hit foul this time over the Angels dugout. Always like this a manager will say to a hitter, I'm depending on you to make contact. Three and two, runner's going to be on the move. And Greg DeSarcina, the new third base coach for the Angels. Pass along the sign. Socia, of course, gives them to Di Sarcina. Navarro runs and a check swing. Strike three. Call throw to second, and that's a strike him out, throw him out, double play. Well, it's probably a conversation right now. The Fed is having Ted Barrett. Thank you for giving me a quick call. I mean, it's a great pitch inside part of the plate. Navarro looking back, knowing he's hoping for contact. And that two seam fastball, Barrett called it quickly enough and the throw right on the bag. And we know that that young man behind the plate, Josh Fegley, could throw, and he just showed it again. So two outs now, and here's Carlos Perez. Carlos Perez, 261, couple of home runs. Bounces this one toward Lori right near the bag. Fires it across side, retired. A run on two hits for the Angels. So we're headed to the top of the third. It's the Angels one and the A's nothing. that everyone in your group will receive an A's replica batting practice pullover. For more information on available games or to book your group jersey day out and call 510-638-GO-A's or visit athletics.com slash jersey. Have to look for John Blue Moon Odom tonight to see if he's got an A's jersey on someplace. Is he down there? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. I'm sure he'll make an appearance sometime or he'll be listening to us and tell us that we haven't mentioned his name. So Blue Moon, mm -hmm. we just did. I don't see him right. Maybe he's taking the night off. Yeah, I didn't see him before the game either, but uh, he will, I'm sure, show up sometime. So one and one to the leadoff man, Billy Burns, who walked leading off the game, ended up getting to second base, and that was it. Well, they've been trying to pitch inside that time. It went outside and got the call from Ted Barrett.
Santiago kicks and the one two pitch is bounced up the middle Giovatella on the back end slips a little bit and his throw to first is going to be late. So it'll be a hit for the speedy Billy Burns. <laughs> you slip with him. Forget it. Put the ball in your pocket and Giovatella just uh, as he went to his right here asking if he's okay and might have strained something and I that's why they're paying attention to him because he tried to plant his actually rolled his left ankle now that look at that check his left ankle or his right ankle that is and then oh geez both ankles very very awkward but uh, it looked like the right ankle tumbling on that started it good hustle by Billy Burns to start another inning so here's Canna do you have a tell us saying you know what I'm the starting second baseman in the big leagues. <laughs> I am not coming out of this game. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna take more than a stumble yes. my ankle, twisting my ankle to come out. Fort field hit yeah. for Billy. Canna takes right down the middle, one and one. The count. Canna struck out, swinging in the first inning. Okay, the thing about Mark Canna, we have seen he's hit. What, eight home runs now? He's hit every home run that he's hit against right handed pitchers. He's got eight. Yesterday was his eighth. And, I mean, against lefties, well. Nice play by Kabitza out at second, although Giovanelli juggles it, but they're going to call him out. The ball popped up in the air when he was in the midst of the exchange from glove hand to ball hand. So that's one out. Disappointing roster move today by the Athletics. Yeah. Pat Venditti was placed on the disabled list. And I don't know, Leon called up from AAA again, but Venditti, which has caught us all by surprise a little bit, it's his right shoulder. And bothering him a little bit. And of course, that raises all the different questions about could he still throw left handed, this, that, and the other thing. But he actually said. He first felt it when he was throwing left handed. Yeah. He had surgery on the right shoulder in 2012. And that was a tear. And he said he thinks this is more just of a strain and not as serious as that one was. And we hope that is the case. Reddick lines one down the right field line, and it is just foul. And Bob Melvin was asked, well, again, why couldn't you keep him and, you know, do this while well, having pitch? When he said, the point was, is. He's most the reason he's here and the reason why he's valuable is because he can right. pitch with both arms. Right. And really, one arm works with the other. And you throw oh, left handed right. and you have to pull, you to pull with, through with the right shoulder. And that's when he originally felt it. He said last Tuesday in the sixth inning. Good swing there by Reddick. Fouls it just to our left. So we hope it's not anything yeah. serious and that he was not only fun to watch, but more importantly, he was doing a very good job. Oh, and two to Reddick, who hit a long fly ball to right field in the first inning. And that one just missed outside. Pretty good 0-2 pitch, though. When you have the home crowd moaning a little bit, hoping that it was called a strike, that's... A pretty good 0-2 pitch then. Reddick hits this one high in the air, left center. It's hanging up for the left fielder after Navarro, and then he grabs it, gets it back in quickly. Now Wednesday against the Rangers, Vendetti said he threw this one pitch to the Shields. This was his last appearance, but it, but in the sixth inning, of course, he flipped the gloves around and used both the left and the right. But it was the sixth inning whenever he paced the three batters and he faced the shields. He said he threw one pitch right handed, then he faced two lefties, two and fielder, threw up the left side. So that's why he's able to complete the inning. But he felt it when he faced the shields. But he did a great job in relief of Jesse Hahn. And I think we were talking about why couldn't he pitch more? Well, now we know that uh, he had to come out after the six because of. An injury. Canna goes and he is safe. Got a good jump and Canna gets a stolen base. 
element of surprise. I guarantee you they looked at the numbers and said, don't worry so much about him. First move, high leg kick. And a great jump. Perez about three quarters of the way to second was Canna before Perez unloaded. So a great element of surprise. Good job by Zobers to take the pitch. Cop, as you mentioned several times, why not let him go? He got two outs. And hard slide and hang on. Hang on and put this left hand on the bag. As we're seeing the middle infielders continuing the tag even after the slide. Off speed pitch on 2 and 0 stays outside. So 3 and 0 now to Zobris. Two out of base hit in the first inning. Well, if they're pitching around him and they throw him a strike through now, he should be swinging. And it was a fastball. But on the outer half, called the strike. 3 and 1. Quick look toward Canna at second, and the ball rolled foul right to it looked like Alfredo Griffin made the play in the dugout. Mike Gallego is about five feet <laughs> from the Angels dugout, and that's who Alfredo Griffin's talking to. Swing and a miss, chased the ball, and Zobra strikes out, and the A's strand another runner, so they've stranded four. Through the first three innings. Bottom of the third coming up. Angels one is nothing. California is brought to you by Roaring Camp Railroads. Kick up your heels at Roaring Camp's free heritage events all summer long. The famous Hollywood sign, which I was told was built in 1923. What, JR? Did you know that? Such. Just turn on your microphone, JR. Kubitska, it's a <laughs> pop up toward Simeon, who goes out onto the outfield grass. John Reynolds, our stage manager, trying to tell us that Hollywood sign was built in 23. Hollywood land. I hope they he's were, right because I just went with it. Because they're trying to sell land or on that hill. Did they sell a lot, John? <laughs> so one away here in the bottom of the third. And that'll bring up Eric Ibar. Ibar grounded out to second his first at bat and the first pitch is strike. It's probably upset that he swung at the first pitch and hit it hard, and especially with Trout walking on five pitches right behind him. So he's taking the first pitch this time, not surprised. And Ibar, very good bunter, and Laurie knows that. He's a step onto the grass.
Trout to follow. One away here in the bottom of the third. That one bounced towards Zobers. Two charges. Picks it up. Flips to first. Two away. So here's Trout. Ben Zobris uh, followed out on the top of the inning. And, and the one thing it looked like he did, he, he swung the ball forward, but it looked like he was expanding, thinking that he was going to expand his strike zone, trying to drive in the runner from second base. But it's not a bad idea, even though he swung through the pitch. But not to see the aggressiveness that he displayed. Trout, 17 home runs and 36 RBIs. And he, taken all the way, takes a strike. Remember in 2006 when Nick Swisher, Milton Bradley, and Big Hurt seemed like they all hit home runs in the same game. And there's been a number of games this year that Trout and Pujols have home homered in the same game. Like yesterday? Yeah. <laughs> but it seemed like they, those guys in 06, I mean, upper 30s home runs just seemed like pretty consistently. One hit, next guy would hit. But between those three, the A's had a lot of home runs hit. Well, Nelson Cruz leads the American League in home runs with 18. And then there's four players with 17. Trout, Pujols, Teixeira, and Donaldson. So two teammates tied for second place. And now three and one. It's almost like they don't want to pitch to well, That was certainly the way it looked in the first inning. That was with one out. This is with two. And Trout got one to hit. And he hits it high and foul. Right field line. Angels lost the three games in New York against the Yankees before they went down to St. Petersburg. And Mike Trout hit a home run like this. Only oh, went to right field. That inside out swing and a line drive bullet to right field at Yankee Stadium. 3 2. He lines it into left field for a base hit. That was an off speed pitch that was on the outer half. And he just goes out there and hooks it in the left field. So a two-out single, and Pujols will hit. Be careful here. Last 14 games, nine home runs, 15 RBIs, and a 365 average. So he's in one of those stretches, Albert Pujols. And that one in for a strike. This is Pujols' fourth year with the Angels. Fourth year of that 10-year contract. And last year, 28 home runs, 105 RBIs. And... Played in 159 games, so he was healthy last year as well and had a nice season. It was 2013 where, where the foot injury really held him up. Good pitch there by Jesse Chavez, and now it's a one and two count. Good off speed pitch, one of the few that he's thrown tonight, and did a good job keeping the ball down low. And Pujols, no contact. But between Trout and Pujols, their contracts, they're going to be hitting in that. Back to back order for a long time, at least the six of Pujols contract. And of course, Trout can play as long as he wants to. Trout is signed through 2020, Pujols through 2021. The difference is this is Pujols' last contract. Trout's got another one yeah. coming. <laughs> at least, yeah. Good block by Fegley, and not surprised that Trout didn't have the secondary lead and try to take off. He wants to keep the bat in Pujols' hand also. Fegley can throw, and he has shown that pretty consistently. And that one missed, but close. Three and two. And Jesse Chavez asked Ted Barrett, was it low? And Ted Barrett said, yeah, maybe a little bit. Definitely would have been a pitcher strike. Yeah. But you saw it crossed in front of that front leg and it was even below the knees there 3-2 pitch with Trout going his bounce toward the dugout that was a breaking ball did not throw on the fastball 
Cole Calhoun is your on deck hitter. Hunter goes again, and the hit pitches hit high and foul into the second level. So Trout getting his wind sprints in, trots back to first base. I think he's in good enough shape. He'll be okay. <laughs> yes, indeed. Another 3-2 and a shot right into the glove of Simeon side retired. So we are through three in Southern California, and the Angels lead the A's one to nothing. Comet bat, the number one app for live baseball. That bat is up to the moment at any moment with in-game highlights, live look-ins, replay reviews, radio broadcast, at cast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or your tablet. JR's doing it right now on both smartphone and tablet and not paying any attention. So here's Butler to lead it off. He'll be followed by Vogt and Laurie in the top of the fourth inning. Billy Butler was called out on strikes in the first inning. A couple of runners on. Facing Hector Santiago. It's interesting, Santiago's last appearance was actually out of the bullpen, which was a bit surprising when you looked at it, but what happened was they had pushed him back a little bit, give him a couple extra days rest, but they had that series at Yankee Stadium where they got knocked around and they were short of pitching, and they needed him just to come in and pitch out of the bullpen, and he ended up throwing three and two-thirds innings. Now Richards was knocked out in the first inning. Exactly. At the stadium, yeah. And that was the game. So Santiago said, fine, I'll come in and got his work in. Didn't give up any runs in those three and two-thirds innings. That one's belted to left center field. Navarro's on the move, and Navarro makes the running catch. So a nice play by Navarro, but Ray, it just did not have that sound. No, it didn't. That crack when you know a nope. hitter really hits it square. Maybe off the end of the bat just a little bit. And plus the ball hangs up here, and we talk about the Coliseum. Nighttime, but you're right. It was not crisply hit. If it was, it's at least off the wall, maybe over the fence. But Navarro, just those long strides, had it under control the whole way. And it's a little tough sky right now with the twilight. So that'll bring up Vogt. And then Vogt takes a first pitch strike. 
Both struck out swinging in the second inning, and he's quickly behind in the count 0 and 2. Well, they might as well sit breaking ball because he's going to see a lot of them tonight. He already has the first two at bats. And Santiago's, I think his delivery has a little something to do with yeah. his success as well. It's a little bit of a funky yeah. and a herky jerky delivery. He's got a little bit of a short arm, and it's kind of a quick short arm, and I think there's some deception there. Uh, watch when he gets to the, the top right there and it brings the leg down and that part he got a little bit of, of a drop of the leg not quite like Clayton Kershaw the lefty but similar in a sense just a little deception which is all a pitcher wants to do. So there has to be some deception look at the lowest opponents batting average against a fastball the league is hitting 174 uh, Santiago's fastball and it's 90 miles an hour. And that was not a fastball. That was a breaking ball, and it dropped right in there. Strike three ball. So strikeout number five. This is called a knee buckler, and I mean that because that's what it did. It buckled the knees of Stephen Vogt. And when you get a body to move like that, absolutely no chance for the bat to do anything except pray that it's a, that's a ball, and it just dropped right in. So two away for Lori. It's sinker first strike, 84 miles an hour. Or he hit a fly ball to center field. That was in the second inning. Lori's in a little bit of a tough stretch right now. He's 0 for his last 16. Remember, he took the ball off his right hand in that series and against the Rangers, and it somehow missed his left hand, hit his right hand, but. It's going to take a lot to get him out of the line. Shoots that one foul. He's have three hits in the game. But have not been able to break through against the 27 year old left hander Hector Santiago. Setting up inside and a fastball that runs way away and a check swing. No swing, says Chris Conroy, the first base umpire. Good swing there. It was a fastball at 91 and a little bit more of the plate than Santiago wanted is the last two times. Let's see the catcher. Carlos Perez set up inside and really Santiago has not been able to get it in there. And that one's hit high in the air to left field. Navarro's back. He's near the wall and that baby's gone. And we are tied at one. And it was a breaking ball. That's amazing. They keep doing it, don't they? Sabathia. Miley was the last one. And this one against the lefty, a breaking ball right in his wheelhouse, and a big home run for Brett Lorry to tie the game on the one two slide. You see the three given by Perez, and it came right in for him to swing right there. And that is down and in to a right hand. That is a very good swing by Brett Lorry. Sounded good, and this time, Marl just has that casual. Fought after everything, doesn't he? This time, though, it got over his head, and actually the wall kind of stopped him. Might have been better suited to go back and jump up, and maybe have a better chance instead of backpedaling and let the wall stop him. So two and zero oh here to Fegley. That home run for Lori, his sixth of the year. He now has 25 RBIs. Santiago the ninth home run that he has allowed in 74 innings and that's a fairly high number nine and 74 that 
one's hit well the left center. Navarro back on this one. And that one is gone. Back to back. Lori and Fegley. And just like that, the A's now lead two to one. It's been a long time, April 17th, the last time the A's went back to back, and they do it tonight at a big time. And a couple of right handers, Josh Fegley showing his power again. Well, Steven Vogt is right on, saying he can handle lefties at low fastball, the 2 1, and he crushes it just like Laurie did, this time, though, a fastball. So back to back home runs with two outs in the fourth inning after a line out to left field and a strikeout by Vogt. Looked like an easy inning. Except for Brett Laurie and Josh Figley. So here's Simeon. Simeon hit a fly ball to Trout in center. First at bat. Outside corner strike. You know, one thing about guys that pitch inside is a slider to Laurie, fastball to Figley. You try to pitch inside, you make mistakes. Yep. And this time, these. Pitches to Simeon have all been out of both been outside. Yep. So you make mistakes, you get burnt, and the A's have the lead because of it. So a couple of home runs back to back. Lori and Fegley for the A's, and we're going to the bottom of the fourth. A's now lead it two to one. So back-to-back -back home runs for the A's, Lori and Fegley, and now Jesse Chavez has a two-to-one lead. Bottom of the fourth, Calhoun, Giovatella, and Navarro. First pitch swinging, vote on the backhand, and that's out number one. So a shutdown inning opportunity for Jesse Chavez. Jesse got me feeling pretty good about yeah, it. So all he's got runs two runs. Support. That's a bushel full for him. <laughs> Brett Lloyd said, hang on that, Jesse. I know you covered first base. Just give me a little breather here. Jesse will pitch tonight, and he gets the first game against San Diego back at the Coliseum next Wednesday. He will miss the two in San Diego, which the A's will go on Monday and Tuesday. Sounds like the... A's on Monday will face their old teammate Tyson Ross. That's what I heard. Last back to back home runs at Kansas City. Davis and Vogt. Giovatella, weak swing, and it's 0 and 2. Now Jesse Hahn will go against his former team, the Padres, who right. traded him to Oakland, and Scott Kazmir. And I know that because both have been swinging bats. Ah. <laughs> Six of seven. 
shut down any opportunities for Jesse Chavez. Well, yeah, we know he was six for six because the Sunday in Oakland was five for five, and then the six for six after the two runs, the three runs actually, and then unfortunately in Boston last Saturday was not as successful. Giovatella let off the second inning with a double, and then he scored. And now the count even at two and two. Fifty two pitches so far for Jesse. And this one's hit high in the air, shallow left, Simeon out. And he's got it two away. Since that strike him out, throw him out, double play, Chavez is kind of settled in a little bit. I noted the strikeout to Joyce was the same pitch that Calhoun hit the home run back in April, but it had the movement this time, froze Joyce and got a definite strike him out, throw him out. Fengler with a perfect throw to second. Navarro takes the first pitch for a strike. He had the RBI single in the second. Navarro. Lined one to left center field. It was his first RBI of the year. Chavez grabs it, and Jesse's going to have a very nice inning. It took him just eight pitches to go three up, three down. Two one A's after four. By Redwood, visit realstrongredwood.com. Well, right next door, the brand new Amtrak station. So, if you wanted a Sunday Ray after the game, you wanted to jump on Amtrak and take it down to San Diego, you could do that. Uh, I know I you may so. just jump on the team bus instead, but it's so. an option. I think so. Amtrak, though, is very good. It's a it's a nice, comfortable ride. It is. Yeah, and. Uh, Encourage people to try it, take it whenever they can. And down here, it's been on before. It's good. Yeah, it's a beautiful brand new station. It's right behind the ballpark. And there it is. Fancy stuff. One and two to Burns. Can't miss it. If you didn't know that was an Amtrak station, you would probably think it was something else. This pop-up is playable right side of the diamond. Pujols is under it, and Burns is retired. 
Yeah, San Diego, Ray. Monday night, Tuesday day. So haven't been there in a while. And then Oakland, San Diego, Wednesday night, yeah. Thursday afternoon. And evidently that's the time of the year because the Angels and the Diamondbacks are doing the same thing. Yeah, except, a lot of teams are. Except they have a Tuesday night game and a Wednesday game oh. where they have to fly. And Mickey Morbido has done an outstanding job as a director of team travel because he convinced the Padres, evidently, I guess there was some discussion about the day game on Tuesday because it's a little difficult flying out of San Diego. Mm -hmm. And the fact that both clubs are going to Oakland, they said, hey, let's just play day game. So good idea. They are going to play the day game Tuesday and then on Wednesday at the Coliseum between the same two teams. That's right. It is that week yeah. or stretch of the week where a lot of two game series, two and two, two at home, two on the road. Canna, that's big swing, yeah. folks. <laughs> Canna's trying to hit the lefties like he's been hitting the right. As we mentioned, eight home runs all against righties, and surprisingly, he has not hit a home run against the lefties. But I, I say a lot of times, you face a lot of righties when you're coming up to get to the big leagues, and Canna's had success against them. Here's a look at the two in San Diego, and then back home Wednesday, Thursday. Against the Padres Angels then in town. Three in Texas back home. So. <laughs> there's a liner fair past Pujols down the right field line. Canna makes the big turn. He's going to try. No, he's not. Now he's going to have to hustle back and he dives back to the head first slide. So Canna, you know what? I give credit. He was going for two the whole way. But he got about a third of the way to second base and he realized bad idea stopped and went back. Well, and that's hustle and that's you think to all the way. And if right fielder Calhoun doesn't get to it, he could continue. But Calhoun throws well. does not want to run into an out. Perfect throw, but the throw is going to second base. And I've seen base runners. I think of the great Hall of Famer Willie Mays would do that and actually slide to stop himself. Get up with a pop up slide and get back to first base. And you know, that's aggressive base running. And more times than not, you run that aggressively. There's going to be a mistake in the outfield because the outfielders now will realize you're that aggressive, and all it takes is a little bobble, and he's standing at second base. And even with that big turn and him going head first back into first base, he was the, he was not in danger of being out at first no, base. No, absolutely, that, that was not going to happen. So one and one to Reddick. A little bit inside, two and one. Reddick has hit a fly ball to right field deep and a fly ball to left field. Reddick was five for 12 in that series against the Rangers. Stolen a base by Canna two innings ago. Now Santiago's paying a little bit more attention to him. He's not going to just come up and throw. And there he goes. Pitches outside. Throw to second base. Yeah. Not in time. Oh. Ibar says check it. Well, Canna with the head first slide. It was a very close play. Well, so we'll see. And the thing is, Cap, he took the throw in front of the bag instead of striding the bag. I mean, you'd think he's out. But the difference there was Ibar in front of the bag. If he's striding the bag, especially with a head first slide, he could apply the tag, but he got him on the shoulder, and they're going to take a look at it to see was his hand on the bag before the tag. That look right there, you can't tell. It has to be more of an outfield shot for them to look at. Ibar tagged him hard. I think I think I just saw Canna. That was close. <laughs> <laughs> and it was. I don't know that there's enough there to overturn yeah. that call. He does not necessarily look out. Well, Ibar can't tell where the hand is whenever he applies the tag. See, that's a that's bang bang. But yeah, it, it looks like the hand, the fingers, of course, coming up. You don't want to jam the fingers into the bag. But if they're saying that New York wants to call on the field, we have to go for that because it's not definitive. We don't know, but check the watch the fingers of the left hand. He comes up with the fingers. 
the palm of the hand goes into the bag and you can't tell right there I mean at that point you think he's safe That's Angel Hernandez with his hands on the headset This may be your best yeah. look right here. Well, see, now that's a different look there. It's either a bad fitting headset or Angel Hernandez has been waiting to make the call for a minute and a half now. Safe. Yeah, safe. So, a very close play and. The call stands. So, second time. Call has been confirmed. Now, the best thing that can happen for the A's is to get a hit. When you challenge a play, they lose the challenge. Now, it have to be an umpire's for the rest of the game since the Angels lost. And so, A's would be great to get a base hit to score him between Reddick or Zobrist, Butler, somebody in this half inning. 3 1 pitch to Reddick. Is popped up on the infield. And Ibar grabs it. So that's out number two. So what's our instant replay counter update? Well, this is through today. So this is as updated as you're going to get it. And Ray, I like instant replay. I know not everybody does, but I just look right at the overturned number. Right. 206 yeah. calls have been overturned. And you can't tell me that that many calls being overturned at some point somewhere doesn't affect the game. Yeah. Does yeah, it affect right. the, the final score of a game? It doesn't happen. I mean, there's not a lot of calls overturned in a game. But the total amount of 206, somewhere it's got to come in play. Same situation as the last time for this at bat of Ben Zobris. Reddick popped up to left field. Zobris went to three and two. Of course, Canna had stolen the base earlier. Actually, he'd stolen it in the Zobris to bat. Zobris trying to drive him in as he was trying in the third inning and struck out on a three two high fastball. So two and one now to Zobris. Wants timeout and he gets it. Got the reason I was talking about uh, Ibar and I, I've talked to Eric Sogard and I said, What kind of a difference does it make if you know pretty good chance that the runner is going to be sliding head first? He said, Then I'll put my knee down. And you can do that. Mm -hmm. If you know the spikes are coming in, you're not going to take a chance to get a cut. But Ibar took the throw in front of the back. If he's right in the back, all he has to do is catch the ball in the private attack. He has to move a little bit when he's in front of the back. And that's one of the biggest differences. Stolen bases or caught stealings. A lot of guys do not like to straddle the bag, but those who do, catchers love them, and they know that they can make the throw. A lot of times, it's just bang right there. They're sliding into it. And see if he's straddling the bag. See how see how much the movement he has to make. Catches the ball, and goes down. If he's straddling the bag, all he has to do is catch it and drop it right there. That extra movement that it took for Ibar to get to the tag. It's just enough for him to get in safe. 2 2 pitch is down the right field line foul. Calhoun with a good effort. So the count remains 2 and 2. Canna the runner at second after the single and then the stolen base. 91 pitches. Cam Bedrosian gets loose. 91 from Santiago. He's making him work, and he of this whole team, probably the only one that arrived in Southern California. He was here. I bet he was here. <laughs> yeah, he, he flew out early, and uh, as a starting pitcher, it was Pedrosian who was on the flight, as everybody else probably was. There's a ball boy. Or out right field, he's on the move, picking up something. 
It's a ball guy, actually, probably not a ball boy. A ball guy. Get his work in. Show good hustle. I like that. <laughs> Inside three and two. So Zobrist has worked the count full. <laughs> Zobrist a single and a strikeout so far. He doesn't want to do that again, though. No. Not for at least an inning or two. Zobrist hits it well to right field, but playable for Calhoun. He settles underneath it. He's got it side retired. So Canna is stranded at second. Bottom of the fifth coming up. It's the A's two and the Angels one. Turn back the clock to 1965 Saturday during the 27th. The then KCA's club featured Bert Campanares and John Blumen Oldham, who finally arrived tonight, who will both throw out the Saturday game ceremonial first pitches. 20,000 fans will receive a Charlie O throwback t shirt presented by Ross, which depicts the iconic A's mule mascot from the 1960s and the 70s. Blue Moon made it. He's here. Got a little late start. Uh, probably waited for Mr. Wolf to get out of the seat. Because, you know, he figures. He's uh, managing general partner Lou Wolf sits down there and I guess now I, I don't know. I haven't seen Lou tonight, so I don't know I if he's seen here. Yeah, so Lou got the seats and he lives down in Southern California and he always supports the athletics. And we will see him at the Coliseum, as we just mentioned, the turn back the clock. As you mentioned Monty Moore will be there and some of the Kansas City athletics. Two and one now to Matt Joyce. Bottom three in the Angels lineup. Joyce, Perez, and Kubica. Inside. Joyce was called out on strikes in the second inning, and that was the first part of the strike him out, throw him out double play. Swing and a miss. Three and two. That right there is why Joyce is still scratching his head. A 3 1 fastball on the inner half, a little down and in, which is where he likes it, and he swings through it. Frustrating. Although that time he laid off, and he's got a leadoff walk. And that you do not see much. Trout, maybe because he pitches around him, pitches him carefully, but to walk Matt Joyce after he just threw a fastball by him 3 and 1, that is not something he was trying to do or thinking about. So here's Carlos Perez. The first place Astros won tonight. They shut out the Seattle Mariners. In fact, they blew them out 10 to nothing. Who started for the Seattle Mariners? Now, Felix Hernandez. <laughs> and you may never give this line again for him, but I'm going to give it because it's shocking. Felix Hernandez was knocked out in the first inning. He pitched one-third of an inning. 
Gave up five hits, eight earned runs, wow. two walks, and two home runs. <laughs> That's almost impossible. Is he starting tomorrow? <laughs> he probably <laughs> wants to. So Felix Hernandez knocked out in the very first inning. Well, we were talking yesterday in our uh, series finale against the Rangers and the simulcast about what would be happening in Houston and the Astros ended their losing streak. And there stands right now four games. This is current. Of course, it's three and a half the Angels. Rangers did win, so they stayed two and a half. And the Astros hit four home runs total in that game. Two of them off of Felix Hernandez. Fegley right in front of the screen. Makes the catch and Perez is retired. Cap, it almost looked like Fegley didn't think the ball was going to stay in. Kind of casually went back. Not a lot of foul territory behind home plate. Fegley went back with his mask in his hand. Oh, okay, it's back there. Let me get rid of my mask just in case. And how about a last catch? And right at the edge of the screen. They cannot touch the screen. The ball can't. So it comes straight down. The glove, as he caught it, then raced it against the screen, which is fine. But that's a big out. Because Perez was not sacrificing, no chance of a hit and run. So here is the young third baseman Kyle Kubitza. Now Kubitza's playing third. David Freeze is a little bit banged up. He's not on the disabled list, but Freeze trying to work through a sore right hamstring. So Freeze has been out of the lineup for a couple days. Kubitska, young third baseman. Acquired in a trade this offseason was brought up. And they expect him to be the future third baseman. Yeah. Freeze, of course, close to free agency. And Kabitza, who had been to the minor leagues. 1 0 pitch swing and a miss. It was an interesting trade. It happened in January of this year with the Braves. The Braves sent Kabitza to the Angels in. The Angels sent a highly regarded young left-handed pitcher by the name of Ricardo Sanchez to the Braves. And the Braves trying to stockpile those yeah. young arms. So interesting trade of two highly thought of minor league prospects. One a position, one a position player, the other one a pitcher. Good fastball inside corner and a little tailing action back towards the middle. Kibitz has started a couple of games in St. Petersburg against the Tampa Bay Rays. One good that he forgot quickly, and the next one turned out to be a pretty good game for him. And he swings through an off-speed pitch, and that's strikeout number two for Jesse Chavez. Two outs. Good fastball, and then came back with a backdoor breaking ball and or change of it. Fegley, I mean, just the thought of him throwing, he had the runner just diving back to first base, and that's the arm strength. Josh Begley and showing his power with the bat, but we have seen him throw and throw very well, and he will shut down the running game as quickly as anybody. Two outs, top of the order, Ibar, who pops it up on the first pitch. Burns is under it. He's got it side retired, so the leadoff walk does no damage, and we're headed to the sixth inning, 2-1, to one, the A's lead.
at athletics.com. Vote is exclusively online and available on your computer, tablet, and smartphone. Vote up to 35 times at athletics.com. JR, vote for vote. 35 times. That's right. Good. And all the other, your favorite A's players. Billy Butler to lead it off. Butler, Vote and Lori here in the top of the sixth inning. Thanks to back-to-back -back home runs by Lori and Fegley in the fourth. The A's lead this one two to one. Ray mentioned the Rangers beating the Twins six to two. So the Rangers got four unearned runs in the bottom of the eighth inning to break a two-two tie. And this one is right up over our head. And then bounces back downstairs. So both the Astros and the Rangers, the two top teams in the AL West, win tonight. Texas now 32 and 29. Butler on a 1 2 pitch swings at a pitch in the dirt. And Butler is tagged out. And that is out number one here in the sixth inning. Warriors NBA Finals Central. It's before every game. It's post game and it's on Sportsnet Central all the way through the playoffs. Game five coverage begins at 3 p.m. on Sunday with a two hour special event on CSN Plus. The coverage that you expect from the home of the authentic Warrior fans. Very impressive win by the Warriors last yeah. night. Really, they dominated the Cavs. To even up the series, two games apiece. Game five at Oracle Sunday, game six. On Tuesday in Cleveland, game seven, if necessary, a week from tonight at Oracle. In fact, there are some Angels folks asking me about that today. Wanted tickets? No, they did not want tickets. They wanted to know what should we do. <laughs> I said, what I would do is. Get out of there as quick as possible if there is indeed a game seven. Trout is under this one and he's got it. So vote is retired. Yeah, it's thinking about uh, the work that Mickey Morbido does in the travel. How about Eric Housen? He does it all for the Warriors and they'll go back and forth now for the next three, right? Yep. Back and forth to Cleveland and to the Bay Area. But. I mean, that is a grueling sport up and down the court and watching LeBron James take one. When he tried to go in for a dunk and ran into a camera person down on the floor. Yeah, that was a cut his head. Stayed in the game. But the Warriors flew back today from Cleveland. It's good to have a couple of days before they resume play on Sunday, you said? I think the Cavs needed an extra day. They looked tired yeah. last night. So maybe that had something to do with. How good the Warriors look. Two and one now to Lori. His home run in the fourth was his sixth of the year. I was impressed with the crowd outside watching on the big screen. <laughs> That's right. I mean, that was that was quite a show. Hundred and four pitches for this left-hander. That's right. They were hanging out in the area right where you and I walked back <laughs> yeah. to the hotel in Cleveland. <laughs> How dare they? You could see the uh, the lights in the background of the baseball progressive stadium. Nobody there. Fortunately, they had played in the afternoon. Hit hard right field, and that's a base hit for Lori. So with the pitch count now at 106, he may get a pitch change. Mike Sosha's coming out. And he was one hitter away yeah. from bidding back in the dugout after six innings. And we've seen that. We saw it with Graveman. We've seen it with the A's pitchers and different pitchers. We'll get through an inning and good things can happen. So Santiago will not get a chance to face Fegley, who he gave up a home run to to give the A's the two to one lead. When it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and tune up. Your oil change, tune up, and repair experts.
Snow, presented by Sungevity, Saturday, June the 20th, against these Angels. Be one of 15,000 fans to walk away with the gnome of the Athletics ace pitcher, where the ball really lights up from solar panels built into the gnome. Get your tickets now by calling 877-493-BALL, or you can visit athletics.com slash tickets. I know John Reynolds will be looking forward to getting a gnome as Hector Santiago, a good outing, Got a lot of rest flying back from the East Coast, but right now he's trailing at 106 pitches. Turns it over to Cam Madrosian, making his third appearance against the Athletics this season. Madrosian, a good fastball like Santiago, except he throws from the right side. Stephen Boat already in the game at first base, so Fegley will stay in the game, of course, and that is be the catcher and also be the hitter as he is swinging the bat well. Madrosian. Four different pitches and including a couple different fastballs, and he does throw well. Good fastball. Bedrosian's been back and forth a couple times between AAA and the big leagues. And a very highly thought of prospect for the Angels. Just handcuffed Albert Pujols. On a 97 mile an hour <laughs> fastball to first base, Pujols not happy. Not quite 60 feet away either. No, no, no. A little shorter than that. Wow. Surprised Pujols didn't roll the ball back to him. First pitch to Fegley is a bit high. Fegley a double and a home run, so a big night for the ace catcher. And as hard as Bedrosian threw the ball to first base, it's almost as if eight was not enough for him to get loose. He had to throw one more a little bit harder. To get loose, and you're right, handcuffed Pujols at first. Now it's 2 0. Hayes have had some success against the bullpen of the Angels this season, and that sometimes can work well. You get the starter out and turn it over to the bullpen. Bob Melvin would like to see a few more runs added. Begley tried to hold up, call the strike. Very little, if any, strive by Josh Fegley against the left-hander. Kind of got up on the ball of his front foot and drove it out to left center. A fastball that he crushed. So Fegley not only catching well, throwing well, but swinging about extremely well. Second home run, the other against his former team. This one hit high in the air to shallow right. Vitella is near the line. He's got it. Side retired. The runner stranded, and we're moving to the bottom of the sixth. It'll be Trout, Pujols, and Calhoun. Two one A's. Jesse Chavez gave up a base hit following a double by Gio Fratelli. One run, one to nothing. And they had the lead until this happened. Brett Laurie, a slider from Santiago. Home run number six for Brett Laurie. All coming, last four against lefties. And Josh Fegley, who's in the lineup tonight, catching 
Left hander on the mound, and he deposits a fastball over the left center field fence for his second home run of the season. Second time this year, back to back home runs for the Athletics. And as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning, Athletics have a two to one lead. The Angels only three hits against Jesse Chavez. Found out what's possible with ATT. Call 1 800 pick ATT mobilizing your world. So a good challenge inning for Jesse Chavez. Then a good job first pitch strike 17 out of 19. And he faces Trout, Pujols, and Calhoun. Trout has walked and singled. There's three hits for the Angels so far. Fastball away. I think Jesse Chavez has really worked hard to keep the ball away from Trout Trout in his first two at bats. I mentioned uh, Sonny Gray talked about that going to the slider more with Trout because he can handle the low curveball. Again, Fagley outside. <laughs> and that one's lying toward right center, and that's a hit. Uh, Jesse, at uh, afternoon game, April the 23rd, and Calhoun down and in. Got freeze there. Another fastball outside corner. Pitching well, staying outside the trout. Jesse pitched well, of course, from this area and enjoys pitching here. Right now, speed at first and power at the plate. And Albert Pujols. First pitch is a good one, right around the knees, first run. So five career starts versus the Angels. Good ERA. <laughs> not much run support. <laughs> and an 0 3 record. So. <laughs> well, you get four runs at 0 3, not surprising. Away to Pujols, one and one to count. Craziest game of the night, Ray, was at Fenway Park. The Blue Jays beat the Red Sox 13 to 10. Red Sox had an eight to nothing lead after four innings, an eight to three lead after six innings. Toronto scored nine in the seventh, and the Red Sox lost thirteen to ten. Did they have any wall balls? <laughs> I'm sure there was a bunch. There was 27 hits in the game. But if you're the Red Sox and you got an eight nothing lead, and I know Toronto's playing extremely well, well they got to be scratching their head there. Alvarez, the lefty, Salas, the righty. So two and one, the count. Trout with a decent lead at first, and the pitch is in the first round. By the way, who started the game for the Red Sox? Got that kind of run support? Sorry, let me check. I just, let me check. Well, the, the Blue Jays have now won nine in a row, so they're finally, oh, finally starting to roll. Joe Kelly started that game oh, wow. and really did not pitch poorly. It was the bullpen that gave it away. That idea to throw to first base. Trout always a threat to steal, and he has lightning speed. Definitely five to a player. Not running, and pools hits it hard but foul down the third baseline. I'd just like to see a, a running situation and take the chances with Josh Fegley throwing out Trout. I mean, he, he's got a strong arm, quick release, and footwork is outstanding. Calhoun waits in the on deck circle. Here's the 2 2 pitch fouled straight back. On a Fastball that was up just a little bit. So good battle here with a hot hitting Pujols in a one run game. Seventy seven pitches for Jesse Chavez. And that one hung on the inside of the part of the plate. Pujols fouls it. So maybe Trout moving here, although 2-2 two -two certainly would be going on 3-2, you would think. 
Uh, the concentration though has to be on this hitter because a mistake to Pujols, trot doesn't matter. I mean, the last thing you want to do is see him trot. Trot has eight steals this year. He's been thrown out three times, so not stealing as much as he did his first couple of years, but as Ray said, very much a threat. And that one's belted toward left center field. Canna on the move. He's not going to get it. Here comes Trout, and they're going to hold him up. And it's going to be second and third. Nobody out. Canna did a really nice job playing that ball off the wall. It bounced right back to him, and that is why Trout was held up. Well, you'd like to see somebody trailing and getting into second base because Pujols hit it so hard. He was just rounding first. I think he may have thought he'd hit it out because he rounded first. He was halfway to second by the time the ball came back in to the cutoff man, but nobody was at second. And they had the double cutoff man with Volt over towards the mound, and unfortunately, nobody was there. Trout running hard, thinking it's going to be sent, but these are saying I had to hold him up because it was hit so hard. So here is Calhoun. Calhoun up the middle base hit center field. Trout scores. They're going to wave home. Pujols. Burns misplays it. Pujols scores. And the Angels take a 3-2 lead. They were sending Pujols the whole way. And Burns let the ball roll past him. And then Pujols just trotted home. And that's unfortunate because a pretty good chance that DeSarcina was sending Pujols. And Billy Burns could throw. Uh, there's a hanging breaking ball and right back up the middle. But watch the ball. See if it snakes a little bit in the outfield. Nope, straight on. He just overran it. Sometimes the ball will have that snake effect when it's uh, hugging the ground. But by the time Burns would have come up with it, Pujols is being sent. And it's almost... It's almost like when A-Rod was sent at the plate in Oakland and surprised about that. Pujols doesn't run well, and that's nobody out. So Calhoun does it again against Jesse Chavez. A two-run home run back in April and a two-run single in this at bat. So Calhoun now 31 RBI. Still nobody out. It's gone single, double, single for the Angels here in the sixth. So here's Giovatella. Calhoun will run a little bit. And he's got four steals in five attempts. Inside with a fastball. Tella with that double. Pujols grabbed that right hamstring a little bit. He was digging hard. He was going about as fast as he could when he came around the bag at third, and then he pulled up just a little bit. So three hits this inning after allowing just three hits in the first five innings. Jesse... Chavez now at 81 pitches and Pomeranz starts to loosen up. Calhoun with a decent lead at first. And he runs, and the ball is tapped toward Lori, who grabs it in fair territory, throws, and they call him out. There was a little hesitation by the umpire, and then he called him out. Mike Sosha immediately out. Can't challenge. He's out. He lost his challenge. He's going to ask for an umpire to review it. But correct me if I'm wrong, you lose your challenge before the seventh. 
And he's held ahead. This is a true argument here. But I don't know that anything could be done. If he lets it go, it's going to go foul, barehanded as he did. And that's a bang bang play. I think he got him anyway. Looked like as he was jumping for the bag. It's Chris Conroy, the first base umpire, who waited about as long as he could before he made the call. Strong throw by Brett Laurie on bare hand. Got it, threw it. And the problem Gio Fatelli had, maybe jumping to the bag the way he did right there, and he's safe. He's safe. Yeah. Ted Barrett's walking down. He's the crew chief. And Mike Sosha, I think Mike Sosha wanted to get yeah, thrown out. Yeah. I don't think there's any question about that. So the ace catch a break. That's, I mean, the replay yeah. showed that Givatelli was safe, and Chris Conroy called him out. So uh, the challenge that was lost earlier. And Calhoun did get to second base on the play. Uh, big stretch by Stephen Bolt, but clearly Givatelli got his foot on the back right there as the throw was reached in the glove, and it was a bang bang play. And from the A's standpoint, it's correct. The A's do have a challenge, but Alfredo Griffin immediately put up his hand. Indicating that he thought he was safe and he was correct, but at that point, nothing could be done. So here's Navarro who takes a strike. Navarro, an RBI signal, and a ground out back to the pitcher. It was a hit and run, and Jim Vitelli. Put the ball in play. In there, first strike, and it's a quick go to the bottom. How about that? This is June the 12th, the first ejection for Mike Sosha of this season. What does that take? Guys, you, you can't you can't argue a challenge. And who was it? Oh, Lord McClendon. Oh, he hammers a big time ejection up in Seattle. Yeah. He was going to get yeah. tossed. Yeah. <laughs> and he went, make sure he said something to every umpire. Well, it turns out it's a big call. I mean, it would have been first That's and right. second, nobody out. That's right. Strike three call. Navarro took it, and he's chewing on the home plate umpire a little bit. Uh, back to low strike, and this time the low one called for Jesse Chavez. This is now just a one-run game. The A's had a two-to-one lead, now trail three to two, and just a little bit on the lower side. So the name's not Pujols, and there's a difference. And Navarro was called out. So here's Matt Joyce. Joyce a strikeout in the walk so far with Calhoun at second. A couple of runs in for the Angels. Calhoun's two run single. He's giving the Angels the lead here in the bottom of the sixth. A little high, 2 0. Oh. Angels trying to go over the 500 mark. They are sitting at 30 and 30. Pop up toward third. Laurie is going to reach in, make the catch, bang up against the railing. He's okay. Side retired. Two runs on three hits for the Angels. So seventh inning coming up. Angels now lead three to two.
Coors, the banquet beer, on this date in 1880 at the Worcestershire Agricultural Fairgrounds. That's right, Agricultural Fairgrounds. Lee Richmond pitches the first perfect game, beating Cleveland 4 0. The 23 year old rookie Southpaw threw a no hitter in the collegiate exhibition against the White Stockings the season before that. Check out the uni. So that was back in 1880. No television back then. <laughs> no replay. No, no replay. No challenge rule. New pitcher. Fernando Salas comes in when it's time for change. Think speedy oil change and tune-up. Your oil change tune-up and repair experts. 0-1 with a 3.75 ERA for Fernando Salas. So now the Angels sitting on a 3-2 lead. The Cam Bedrosian came in. He got one out. So Salas to face the ninth place hitter, Simeon. First pitch is right in there first time. Simeon with a fly ball to center field and a fly ball to right field. Speaking of getting thrown out of the game, see what Torrey Hunter got a two-game suspension for his little tirade at Target Field the other night. Wow. He was thrown out of the game and then kind of lost it for a little bit. What if that's because he got rid of his uniform? <laughs> it took off I him. would say that that was part of it, yes. <laughs> One and two to Marcus Simeon. Simeon's got a home run against the Angels this year, one of his six. 92 from Salas. So Santiago ends up going five and two-thirds innings, gives up the two earned runs on the back-to-back -back home run. He's going to get a no decision. Well, the A's gave Salas a, a loss back in... April following that Jared Weaver start of six innings giving up just one run and Salas came in and he's got to him Trump comes in he grabs it So one out here in the seventh inning You have to wonder Kai from the sixth inning if Pujols had not been sent and That's what happened at Gio Vitelli the, the slow hit ball strike out and a pop-up uh, So who knows what might have happened, but here he's seen a set out of Pujols and up scoring two runs. And after that, the Angels didn't do anything else except get their manager ejected. First pitch to Burns, a swing and a miss on a fastball. Burns has walked, singled, and popped out. So he's been on base a couple of times. The third series of the year between these two teams. Remember, they had a four game set here in Anaheim in very early April. Two teams split, and then soon after that, he's lost two of three in Oakland. It was toward the end of April. So, all in all, the A's are three and four against the A's this year, against the Angels this year. With Lots of baseball between these two teams left to play. I think these will be here the final week of the season. Three game series. Strike three called on the outside corner. So that's two outs here in the seventh inning. Hey, if you're looking for the best coverage of Oakland A's baseball, log on to CSNCalifornia.com as insider Joe Stiglitz provides wire-to-wire -wire reporting of the A's 2015 season with breaking news, video, special features, and more only on CSNCalifornia.com. So the A's have struck out seven times tonight. And with two outs, Canna hits with the bases empty. First pitch, a little slider first strike.
Canna had a base hit Back in the fifth inning. He also stole the base. In fact, Canna's got two stolen bases tonight. And he does run well. So Pomeranz was throwing. Now Rodriguez is throwing. At the knees, wow. and Canada didn't like it. So Canada's asking Ted Barrett. Well, it's giving a low strike again now. At least it seems that That's low. it is low. And One two pitch. Reach four and hit back up the middle, and that's a base hit for Canna. So he's two for four. Got a pretty good swing going right now, Montana. Well, especially outside, that might have been a foot off the plate, but great extension and uh, gets the right hander. And we have talked about his success he's had against them. And so, with the two stolen bases, but he tried again. He did not have a big lead with Santiago pitching in his last stolen base back in the fifth inning, but still with the head first slide and the challenge, able to get in safely. So here's Reddick, maybe a little two out rally for the ace. The shift is on with three infielders on the right side. Reddick is in a fly ball to right, a fly ball to left, and a pop out to short. Swing and a miss and a change up, 84 miles an hour. Reddick were to get a board, Zobris would be next. And that one's belted to right. And that baby's gone. And the A's grab the lead back. It's four to three. Every year, Josh Reddick, that is now 10 and 38. 10 home runs, 38 runs driven in. And Mark Canna starts it with two outs, and you're exactly right, Kai. Maybe a two out rally. They started it, Canna. And then Josh Reddick, a three run shot yesterday, capped a six run inning. And tonight, a two run home run to give the A's the lead. And I thought it was interesting, Kai. As soon as he hit that, had a shot. Guys did a great job showing Bob Melvin. As Reddick was rounding the bases, Bob Melvin immediately talking to his pitching coach, Kurt Young, what do we do now? Because everything changes. You go from trailing by run to leading by run. And immediately started looking at who's coming up and what are we going to do and we're making that decision now. But big, big hit by Josh Reddick. Third home run tonight by the A's. And now a quick 2-0 to Ben Zobrist. Zobrist had a base hit back in the first inning. Change up. Man, good one. So two and one. Uh, fastball, how about down and in? Missed location. Supposed to be outside. Perez set up there, but Josh Reddick, as he said after the game yesterday, when he hit the three run home run, previous pitch he had tried, did not try when he hit it. And the same tonight. Missed location. And I really think what Jeff Bannister said, a lot of truth to it. Hitters don't hit home runs, pitchers throw them. And I think there was a classic example, mislocation, and Reddick took advantage of it. And mistakes usually end up where pitchers don't want them. Two, two pitches down and away, so three straight off speed pitches to Zobrist. Count is full. Second home run Salas has allowed this year. Fouled straight back. Another off speed pitch.
So Laurie and Fegley back to back homers in the fourth. Reddick a two run homer here in the seventh for the A's four runs. Swing and a miss. He went with a fastball. Side retired, but Reddick with a big hit. It was a two out rally. Canna with a base hit. And then Reddick with his 10th home run of the year. And just like that, the A's are back in front. It's four to three as we have reached the seventh inning stretch. It's Carlos Perez leading things off, and Jesse Chavez back to work. This is pitch number 90, so. It's not bad. No, it's not. And for Jesse to pitch six innings against the Angels on the 23rd. Pitch again tonight. And through 110 and start against the Yankees. That was eight innings as well. It'll be Perez, Kibitza, and Ibar. So now it's Pomeranz and Scribner. Oh. Well, that's a big inning because. Yeah. And that one's into right center for a hit. So Carlos Perez gets his first hit. Drops a single in the right center field. Just hit number seven for the Angels. And Trout do up now third after that base hit. With Ibar and the on ducks are. You would have to think this young man's going to be part time. Mm -hmm. You try not to think about Trout, but he's always moving. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we were talking about uh, Miguel Cabrera with the Tigers. Same and uh, they were in town. Swing and a miss. Uh, change up to Bitsu with a big swing. He did the same thing in his last at bat in the 15th. Kyle Kubitsa. That one foul and a same pitch again, 84 miles an hour. Davidson is from Hockley, Texas. Long look by Jesse Chavez. Now he's ready. Fegley sets up outside and the ball runs outside. One and two. Think about these uh, dugouts and the runways. Mike Sosha, even though he's ejected, can stand just below the stairs 
He wouldn't do that, though, of would he? Of course he will. <laughs> He's probably there right now. I bet a camera could find him. Broken bat. One hopper. Zobers has it. Out at second. The throw back to first. Double play. What a job by Marcus Simeon. Started by Ben Zobers, but the finish by Marcus Simeon at shortstop was tremendous. So no bunt. Broken bat. Zobers that perfect feed. Watch Simeon come across and unload one to first base as Kabitzi gets down the line well. But that was not an easy double play. The guys made it look easy, but a strong throw to finish it off by Marcus Simeon. So two outs. Here's Ibar. Inside Ibar. A couple of ground outs and a fly out for the Angels. Lead off man. The only position player that the Angels are missing is Colin Cowgill, who's yeah. a part time player. He's on the disabled list with a wrist injury. There's Tyler Skaggs, the young left handed pitcher, out all year with Tommy John surgery. Burns has got it. Indeed, side retires. So big double play, and we're on to the eighth. 4 3 A's lead. California is brought to you by Sonoma Raceway. Don't miss the Toyota Save Mart 350 and Jeff Gordon's final race, June 26th through the 28th at Sonoma Raceway. Visit racesonoma.com for tickets. It's going to be a commentator, isn't it? I think I, I saw he where is, he's going to. He'll be good at it. Yeah. He can do just about whatever he wants. <laughs> but it's time for change. Think Speedy Oil Change and Tune Up, your oil change, tune up, and repair experts. Lefty Jose Alvarez comes in. A couple of lefties in the bullpen for the Angels, Alvarez and Cesar Ramos. So fourth pitcher of the night, Salas gives up the home run to Redick. So Alvarez to face Butler, Vote, and Laurie here in the top of the eighth inning. He's hanging on to a four to three lead. Two teams always play a lot of the tight ball games. Well there are two that stand out to me Kipe and you know back and forth and I think over the course of the years these two clubs have played you're right that they have the records almost identical very close but remember the game that Jesse Chavez pitched a kid named Tropiano oh, pitched yeah six plus innings I, I think he gave up just five hits the A's unfortunately did nothing were shut out two to nothing. And then the final game of the series at the Coliseum, which Houston Street 
Gave up the shot to Ike Davis to straightaway center that Trot caught against the wall. Base is loaded. The ninth inning. That's how it ended. Right? Exactly. And that's after the A's had scored three in the ninth, and that would have won the game. <laughs> and Street said he almost injured a, a muscle trying to do high fives and, and being so happy when the ball was caught. But I mean that that's how close these games have played. Even games that you think they're going to be. Like that was a 6-2 game by the Angels, and then all of a sudden it was a shot by Ike Davis that ended it. Speaking of Ike Davis, he's coming back pretty soon. And he's getting closer. And A.J. Griffin's getting closer. Yeah. 0 one to Stephen Boat. Boat has struck out twice and hit a fly ball to center field. Rolls that one to Vitella. Cool. Butler and Boat both 0 for 4. And here's Lori. Lori's got one of the A's three home runs. That was in the fourth. And we got six home runs and 25 RBI. Swing and a miss. Fastball away. Bob Melvin's hoping Scribner in the eighth, Clippard in the ninth. That would be the best setup. And for <laughs> the Angels in that bottom of the eighth, Trout, Pujols, Calhoun. Yeah. Well, I remember the game earlier, too, that Arnold Leon made his major league debut against Trout, Pujols. That ninth inning, the A's had a big lead, but. Made his debut and his option back to Triple A, and he's back, so he's getting some opportunities. Actually, the third time he's on that Nashville to Oakland to Anaheim to wherever the A's are. Way high, two and two. Everything's final in the American League. The Cardinals beating the Royals four to nothing in St. Louis. Alvarez grabs it, turns around, throws to first side, retired. So Jose Alvarez has a three up, three down inning. Bottom of the eighth coming up. Big fellas coming up for the Angels. A's leading four to three. Four nine and one for the A's, three seven and zero oh for the Angels. Jesse Chavez is very good. He's in line for a win, but a little work to do. For the A's they need six more outs. Hector Santiago pitched well. Back to back home runs by Lori and Fegley, and then Reddick homered, and that was the big blow for the A's in the seventh inning. So Scribner comes in. 
it's time for change. Think speedy oil change and tune up your oil change tune up and repair expert. So Scribner here in the eighth inning. Also got a couple other changes. I'll give you those in a moment. Defensive changes for the athletics. And Trout is going to lead it off. So going to be some tense moments here in the bottom of the eighth. He's staying fold in the game. And he is now left field. Cannon is out. So fold and left. And a shortstop as well as Andy Perino comes in. Well, Evan Scribner finished off the game yesterday, throwing nothing but strikes after Scott Kazmir eight great innings of one-hit baseball, and Scribner finished that game, although that game seven to nothing lead. As the A's did win the series finale against Texas, and a little bit different tonight, just a one-run lead. Scribner, as we know, good fastball cutter, curveball, occasional changeup, and usually works quickly. First pitch strike. Trout tonight walked in the first, singled in the third, singled in the sixth. And he ended up scoring in the sixth inning. Number one pitch, fastball, a little high, a little outside. So the count even at one and one. Pujols to follow, and then Calhoun. Trout asks for time, and Ted Baird gives it to him. Three for six, double and a triple against Scribner in his career. Swing and a miss. I like the two strikeouts. <laughs> that was a good part of that line of the unanimous most valuable player from last year, Mike Trout. Second, second, first in three years of baseball. That's not bad for a youngster. One, two pitch, high fastball, hit high and foul. Now the one thing in Pat, we talked about what uh, Sonny Gray has done with Mike Trout and thrown the hard slider away. And of course, Evan Scribner has the cut fastball. Similar, but not with the, the type of movement that Sonny Gray has with his slider. One, two. And that one's hit high in the air to center. Burns is going back. And that is gone. Wow. Wasn't cheap. That ball was gone as soon as it left the bat. So Trout's 18th home run of the year, and we're tied 4-4. Look where this pitch ends up. That was the cutter, and Evan Scribner do it. It did not get outside where he wanted it. Stayed in the middle of the plate and absolutely crushed to straightaway center. And watch where this ball lands. Over the ivy, yeah. up on the AstroTurf. So here's Pujols. And you know, in reality, the cut fastball was just enough of an off-speed pitch that he was able to do that, especially the fact that it stayed towards the middle of the plate. He threw a fastball by the first pitch, but then the cutter, because it didn't break. And that one's hit to left. Fold his back. He's at the wall. He's got it. One out. Well, they have homeward. In the same game so many times. That had to have a few people thinking. From the A standpoint, hoping not. And from the Angels, thought they'd gotten it. Fastball. And Scribner had to be thinking, did he do it too? Fortunately, it's up high enough. And Pujols didn't get enough of it. So here's Calhoun. And Jesse Chavez, a brilliant performance again. Seven innings. He'll get a no decision. Curveball drops low to Calhoun. Calhoun with a two run single in the sixth inning. Oh. 
And that one's belted to right. This is trouble. And this is an Angels lead. Location, location, missed it. It's almost like he was trying to guide the ball instead of throwing the ball, and Calhoun took advantage of it. He knew it as soon as he hit it. Here's Giovatella who takes low. So a couple of monster home runs here. And I say monster, meaning important home runs. Uh, and no doubters, too. It's, it's not as if you were hoping it. Dave Pujols came close to hitting another one. So Calhoun with three RBIs. That home run was his sixth of the year. And giving up a lead in the bottom of the eighth inning on the road is. The worst. Uh, Street was going to come in anyway for the ninth. Yeah, he was going to come in to try to hang on to a tie, but now he comes in, which he is loosening up, and he will come in to try to save it. Foul straight back two and two to Giovatello with for Navarro. And the on deck circle, and there is Street. Well, I was thinking, Kite, that if Evan Scribner could have gotten through this inning, this would have been the save. Because of this part of the batting order. And unfortunately, two of the first three hitters have gone deep, and that potential save opportunity, although not recorded as a statistic, I always say that sometimes it's not always the ninth that is the one that saves the game, but unfortunately, he's going to have to try to mount to come back again. Three and two. And it's just off the plate, and it's a one-out walk to Giovatella. Third walk of the night by A's pitchers. But Bob Melvin's coming out. There's one out in the bottom of the eighth. And he's going to make a move. So Scribner allows... Tying home run and the go ahead home run here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Pomeranz coming in. California is brought to you by Toyota, the full-time automaker with the longest-lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. And by Xfinity, home of the most live sports.
So the Angels, a couple of solo home runs here in the bottom of the eighth, have taken the lead five to four. Now the A's are just trying to get back in the dugout. One out, runner on first, and Drew Pomeranz comes in. Pomeranz, his fifth appearance out of the bullpen, making eight starts this year. So Pomeranz will face Efren Navarro with Matt Joyce, the on deck hitter. So a couple of left handers, so a good opportunity for Bob Melvin to get his. One of his lefty relievers in the game. He's got three now with Abad, Pomeranz, and O'Flaherty. Well, plus he has a lefty, Jim Fatella, maybe less likely to try to steal. You have to pay attention to him because he might run anyway. Lori, right, even with grass in the dirt, and the first pitch is inside the Navarro with the breaking ball. You have to go to the ninth inning trailing by one. You cannot let the Angels add on. One's tough enough against Houston Street, but you do not want to have to go beyond the one to try to do something tonight. Slider and a good one for a strike. So one and one the count to Navarro, who had the RBI hit in the second. Nine hits now in the game for the Angels. Actually, nine hits for both teams. Simeon's got it. He'll shovel the second for one, make that Perino. He's got it. And he shovels to Zobers. Zobers turns the double play. And the side is retired, but damage done by the Angels. The two solo home runs by those two guys, and it's 5 4. the Oakland Athletics and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Athletics Investment Group LLC. Hey we got in-depth sports news for the Bay Area fan know it all with Sportsnet Central. It's brought to you by Hyundai and it's tonight at 1030 and it's over on our sister station Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. We'll have all of our highlights and analysis from this A's Angels game. The NBA Finals get you all ready for Game Five with our insider Monty Poole. Kelly Johnson and Ed Freed will host Sportsnet Central tonight at 10:30 on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. One more shot for the A's. They trail 5-4, top of the ninth inning. Houston Street comes in the closer. Street 17 saves in 19 chances, so he's blown a couple. Through the saves against the A's, so he's pitched well against his former team, in which he was the rookie of the year. 
292 career saves now for Houston Street. So he's got Fegley, Fold, and Burns. Street kicks in the three-quarter delivery. Stays high. A patented three-quarter delivery of Houston Street with that almost like a kind of slides that right yeah. foot before he gets ready to deal. Toward left, coming in is Navarro. Kind of a soft line drive, maybe off the end of the bat, and he's got it. So one away here in the ninth inning. He's need some base runners and move the line along. So here's Fold. Fold in the game. Playing left field, but he was inserted into the lineup in the ninth spot. Swinging a much better bat as of late. Trying to get aboard here as he takes the first pitch strike. High and foul into the second level. So fold behind in the count, 0 and 2. Fold was 4 for 8 in that series against the Rangers. Oh, change up and a good take, just a bit low. Not overpowering, and you're right, just kind of slings the ball and has a sinker, the fadeaway kind of the change up from the lefties, and occasional slider. In the dirt, two and two. And really, you, you can't expect to get too much. Houston no. Street has never been overpowering with any of his pitches, and you just kind of hope you can stay back and drive the ball. The rare relievers that actually starts and pitches out of the stretch until somebody gets on. Pitches out of the windup, that is. Fold hits a high pop up and it's going to just reach the seats. So the count remains two and two. Burns to follow. Well, well, the A's might not have a lot of pop in this part of the batting order. They've got some speed. Very close. Street thought he had strike three. Ted Barrett says, I don't think so. Backdoor slider, according to Ted Barrett. And he's the one that counts. It kind of backed up a little bit. Payoff hey, pitch. Here it is. And it's hit up the middle. Base hit center field. So Sam Fold. Stay hot. He's aboard and he's the tying run. So here's Burns. Well, once he took the 2-2 the two -two pitch, then he expanded his his zone full dead and got very aggressive. And while he might have swung the ball four, the way he's been swinging the bat, might as well swing, which he did, and sends the ball up the middle. Burns is one for three tonight. Single, and he's also walked. Eric Sogard has come out into the on-deck circle. That's the Perino spot in the batting order. This pitch runs off the plate. So maybe best-case scenario for the A's to have Reddick get in that bat yeah. because Reddick's He's swinging that bat pretty well. He's got the big home run in the seventh inning. And, that one, and a foul tip. And the count one and one. And I don't think he's trying to, but for Billy Burns, hit the ball to the ground. Well, they're really shading him, playing him shallow, infield, outfield. And just like sometimes you see him line the ball in the gap and just, just watch the Rabbits run. 
And that one that goes through Perez and Sam Fold to second base. A break for the A's. Well, if Mike Sosha is watching this on TV, he's not going to be happy with this effort by his catcher. You don't backhand a ball to try to block it, especially you're putting the time run in score position. And Perez did the Cardinal sin, and that is not a good attempt. And Mike Sosha is a former catcher. He can be a little bit tough, and, and that's what he should be. But that is a break for the A's and see if they can take advantage. They have two opportunities to try to score on the time run. But backhand, not what you want to try to do. You cannot block a ball. You get lucky if you do, but if you move your body in front, the body is to try to block it, not a backhand. So see if the A's can take advantage. Outfield comes in a couple of steps. 2-1 to Burns. And this changeup and a good one from Street. Only Cole Calhoun, the right fielder, is actually staying in his pretty much normal spot. Trout, a little more shallow, and Navarro comes in. Although we've seen outfielders play more shallow with Burns. Yeah, a lot more, yeah. The Angels are. I'm surprised at how deep Calhoun is. 2-2 delivery, and he swung and missed at a pitch in the dirt. Throws to first, and that is the second out. So, Willie Burns, who really does not chase yeah. pitches out of the strike zone very often, but he did there, maybe just a little anxious. Well, this might have been another off-speed pitch, too, and he's swinging at the motion right there, and, and he did. He turned the ball over, Street did, and threw him a changeup, and Bob Melvin, is he going to ask about a foul tip, and that be Billy Burns. The reason he didn't run, maybe he thought he had foul tipped the ball. And first Ted Barrett not surprised and shaking his head. See, Billy, if he, if he foul tipped this ball, he's got to argue. Ball hit the plate. And Navarro did a good job of blocking that one. Or uh, Perez did, that is. But you got to be a little bit more adamant and, and argue yourself. If... Because all that time taken, it's very rare that they're going to change the, their idea of it being a foul ball or a strikeout. So here is Sogard pinch hitting for Perino. First pitch outside. So Sogard, who's a little bit of a sore left wrist, but getting a big pinch hit spot here in the ninth inning with the tying run at second base and two outs. That one just missed, and the count is 2 0. Close pitches, but Sogard has a, a good eye. By well, the way, Sogard's been going, the way he takes pitches and then reacts, he may pull the ball down the corner in right field. He's just hope his wrist is okay. He said it is fine. It just happened to be a left hander starting tonight, or he might have been in the starting lineup, but it was the lefty Santiago starting for the Angels. The 2 0 pitch strike with the knees. Low strike call. And took something off the pitch again. There's your tying run. The speedy Sam Full. Ivar playing behind him. Now he backs up, goes back to his normal spot. And the 2 1 pitch. In the dirt, blocked by Perez. Reddick is your on deck hitter. So, an entertaining ball game tonight. Back and forth. Some big home runs by both teams. Numerous lead changes. Three one pitch here it is up and away and he walked him. So Reddick is going to hit with the game on the line. Now this is what he did in his previous at bat. Seventh inning, A's down a run, two out base hit by Cannon, two out two run home run by Josh Reddick. Just reacted on a fastball down and in, and right now just react on something off speed because the fastball 
that he hit for a home run from Salas is not going to be close to the velocity in which Street is going to pitch him. He's going to change speeds and sliders and backdoor. So Reddick's home run in the seventh was his tenth of the year. He now has 38 RBIs. He take a blue pit here. First pitch on the outside corner as Street hit the target. Perez wanted it outside, and it was right there for strike. Good spot for Reddick. Two outs and runners in scoring position. He's 12 for 23 on the year. Blocked again by Perez. This one rolls out in front of home plate. It's a good block. So he did it also with full and second with Sogard hitting, and Perez keeps both runners at first and second this time. Block, he came up with the glove, but able to have the ball come up as well. Captain Reddick has done such a good job of hitting the ball in left center. Big Drive, gap. Driving the ball that well, that way, and if he stays back and waits on pitches from Houston Street, I see him attempt to go that direction. He pulled the ball in the right field seats. 1-1 one, one pitch outside with a fastball. And the crowd reacted, but that was really not that close. So two and one the count. Change up. You know, and this may sound silly, Ray, but Houston Street, he has a base to play with. Yeah, you're right. I know I know it's third base, but right. you still don't have to lay one in there. Reddix hopes he does. And he got one. And he fouls it down the left field line. Yeah, you're right. And a lot of people always look at first open or second, but third, it's yeah, open. Especially if, you, if yeah. it's, you know, the, there's one out left in the right. game. The only difference here, and of course, with Reddick swinging about well, it would put two runners in scoring position where a hit could give the A's the lead. Right now, a single should tie the game, assuming the ball is in the outfield. He's gone sure. hard, everything hard to right. He's not pulled the string yet. Maybe the changeup that was in the dirt, maybe that was the softer pitch. 2-2 pitch. Here it is. In the dirt. Reddick had a good look at it. And now it's 3-2 and two and the runners will take off. So now a ball in the gap. Certainly should score two. Yeah. What do you think, Ray? I think he throws him an off-speed pitch. I do too. Again. I think he throw him a change up. Slider. I mean, Reddick just took that 2-2 two -two pitch like he, he was expecting something off-speed. And you know, again, when he reacts and he does not try to hit home runs, that's when he just waits and reacts and drives the ball. Fold and Sogard are set to take off, and here's the pitch, and it's hit high in the air, shallow center. And that's the ball game. So Houston Street gets Reddick on a little pop fly to center. 